guys, welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to talk about 20 new products that just arrived at Sephora. You're going to notice if you've been paying attention to all of the new stuff that has launched that there's going to be a lot of missing items because this is fall edition. So I pulled a lot of just individual makeup launches. If it's a holiday set, if it's very clearly a holiday launch, we're saving that because I'm gonna do what just arrived at Sephora Holiday Edition. That one will be much larger. But I kind of just wanted to tie up in a nice little bowl all of the fall launches before I start to get into the holiday launches. But I've reviewed so much holiday already on my channel and individual reviews and face videos if you do want to check that out. But we're gonna finish up all of these fall launches. Let's go ahead and get started with our complexion. Starting off with the new Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Water Cream. So this is a gel-based version or inspired version of the original Magic Cream, and it definitely is much more gel-like compared to the thickness that the Magic Cream has. I've been loving this. I've talked about how they said that this has 100 hours lasting power of hydration, and I cannot confirm 100 hours, but I really do feel like this leaves my skin continually feeling moisturized for hours. So hours later, it will still feel like I just applied this moisturizer. And I've been using it for two, almost three weeks now. And it doesn't break me out because a ton of moisturizers break me out, you guys. So I've been loving this, but it is very expensive. For this size, it's $100. I did receive this in PR, but I think when I run out of this, I will repurchase it. I'm, I'm like hesitant only because I have such a large skincare collection. I'm always testing new products, but if I didn't have the collection that I had, I definitely would repurchase this. My skin really likes this. I have very sensitive skin that breaks out to moisturizers so easily. This doesn't break me out. And I don't know if I prefer the Magic Cream or this. They both are fantastic, but I've been loving this because it has a thinner feel, but definitely has that lasting hydration. So loving this. So these next two products are also new, but today was my first day testing them. So do keep that in mind, but I haven't heard much about either of these launches. So first thing, Bare Minerals just launched a new foundation. This is the Pure Serum Radiant Natural Liquid Foundation. This is a very unique product from what I can tell so far. It is very, very watery. It almost feels water-based and gives pretty light coverage. It has a hydrated feel. Honestly, I need to test this more, but this was acting really, really funny on my skin. It was pilling in some parts. It was getting clumped up in some areas on some parts of my face. So based on first impressions, truly, I am not a fan of this. I did not like the way that this looked on my skin. I felt like it was also sitting on top of the skin. However, it is a first impression, so make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to continue to test this foundation and... I will let you know in, in a speed review is coming up if I ended up liking it or not liking it, but it did not apply well on that first try. So unfortunately, not a fan of that so far, but we'll keep you updated. Another launch that's a little less talked about here is this new concealer launch from Lancome. This is the new serum concealer. So this is from their natural, like the Skin Glow Foundation line from Tanti Doll. It's like the Tanti Doll Skincare Glow Foundation. This is the concealer version of it. Definitely very serum-y. This has pretty light coverage, I would say, as well. Truly, it's not what I was expecting. I wanted a little bit more coverage from this, but again, today is my first day wearing this. It does give a natural look, so this is definitely better for no makeup makeup days or lighter makeup days, but I'll continue to keep you updated, but if you're looking for a serum concealer, this fits the bill. Couple more concealers. So we have the new Gucci Beauty multi use longwear concealer. Loving this. It gives the lighter side of medium coverage. So don't expect this to cover every discoloration, every zit, all of your super dark purple under eyes. Lighter side of medium coverage. However, I love this because it almost has like a soft, matte, powdery kind of dry down. I actually wore this last night without any foundation. So I put this in a little bit more areas than I normally would. Didn't even put powder on top. And keep in mind, I do live in Miami and I feel like this almost self sets. I do recommend setting it, especially for more full coverage days, but 
the dry down on it is pretty long wearing and it looks very natural and skin like and it wears really well so I've been enjoying this one a lot it's definitely a good launch it's a splurge but it's still a good launch then I have the house labs concealer this one is definitely a full coverage concealer it lasts a long time it does have a hydrating feel I don't feel that it has a matte finish there's definitely some hydration there it's really nice and it has grown on me the more I used it I was a little unsure of it at first but I've been enjoying reaching for this a lot lately I love the full coverage that it gives okay now there's a new brand at Sephora that I got to try they were kind enough to send these to me so this is from the brand mango people I believe it's supposed to be just like a really effortless easy to use product that's really clean really nice ingredients unfortunately I'm not the biggest fan of these they do work they get the job done but there's so much makeup out on the market today it's really competitive out there and honestly there are just products that i like more like these aren't bad but they aren't my favorite so i'll start off with the bronzer here this is in the shade chai and i've learned with all of these products normally i like to take a brush directly to the product and then blend it onto the skin i find that with this brand you can't do that you do have to directly go onto the skin to get lasting pigment which i don't really like that aspect they're also a little bit harder i do think they blended out better today because i was using the bare minerals foundation which is more watery so there was a lot more give that i got with this product so it blended out a little easier than normal but these have a lot of drag so this bronzer it is a little bit orangey this is a shade chai not my favorite shade but like i said it's okay it gets the job done my least favorite product in the line is probably the blush this is the multi stick in the shade diaper right here again it just tugs at my cheek and you do have to apply it directly to the cheek because you're not going to get pigment any other way so not a fan of the cream blush especially with all of the popular cream blushes that have launched on the market and then probably my favorite item though is this morning light highlighter it's pretty sheer it's almost like a clear highlight but it does add a little bit of hydration back to the face and it works well over powder so if your skin is looking really dry, honestly, this is really nice to add a little bit of shine in that area. So I do like the highlights, but the other two I'm really not feeling. It's just there's a lot better, beginning with this right here. So Nude Sticks launched a new blush formula. These are called the Nudies Matte and Glow Core. And so basically it has like peptides and good skincare ingredients right here in the center. And the finish of it is very glowy. This, I feel like I'm not getting a lot of product here. It's super duper tiny, but I do really enjoy this formula. I have it on this side of my cheek. It blends out really great. It applies great over makeup. It also applies great just on bare skin for a quick no makeup makeup look to get a little bit of color to the cheek. Blends great with a finger. And it definitely does have this skin carry kind of ingredients and gives a dewy finish it feels very hydrating on the cheek overall I'm very much enjoying this formula and you know blush sticks you know how many formulas can there be out there especially since new sticks has been in the game of blush sticks for such a long time but this new formula is really really nice and this particular color that I have rose glow is gorgeous okay i have two powders the first one is from milk makeup they used to have a different powder which was pretty nice back in the day but now they have this new pore eclipse translucent loose setting powder and this is very nice it's very very lightweight and it does have some blurring properties I've been enjoying having this in my speed reviews drawer. I've been grabbing for it on the daily. It sets the makeup beautifully. It feels really lightweight. Once this goes into general population with the rest of my powders, it definitely will stand out a lot less to me. It's just I have my favorite powders. I'm always reaching for my favorite powders. And I don't want to say I won't ever reach for this again. But there are better powders out there than this. But I'm not mad at it. It's still a nice powder. It's really competitive in the market today. They did a good job and I think this is a good powder within their line. It completes their line. So if you're interested in a milk makeup powder, I don't think you'll be disappointed by this. The other powder that I have here is Pressed. So this is from Huda Beauty. It's their Easy Bake and Snatch powder, which I did a whole dedicated review on. I've been using the shade Pound Cake the most. I like this powder. I like that it has a little bit more pigment and more brightening powder. I do not like it as much as the loose setting powder in my eyes. They created such a tip top, best of the best, 
loose powder formulation that I was hoping it would translate into a pressed form very well. And it's just not the same. It's not quite as smoothing, but I do like the brightening aspect of this and it's just convenient having it in a pressed form. A lot of you guys told me that there is like mica or something in here. Maybe it's not mica, but it, there's something in here that gives it a little bit less of a flat finish therefore making it not as blurring because it's not as matte and I can definitely see that on this skin. That being said though, this does have a place in my collection because I do when I'm done with my makeup for the most part. You know how sometimes you can lose a little bit of the brightness when you're done with your makeup. I do like going in last step like right in this area then under here just to bring the brightness back and it's great for that. So not as good as a loose powder, but definitely has its place here, has a job in this collection. So that's it for fall complexion launches. Let's get into the eyes. Now this was supposed to be on the last just arrived at Sephora's video, but I forgot to put it in. So I'm just gonna put it in here. I've been loving it. This is the new Rare Beauty brow gel, which sold out at Sephora, but I believe you can get it on the Rare Beauty website. This one is really, really nice. You have a lot of play time with it. I wasn't sure if I liked it at first because honestly, it takes a long time to set down. But once it does set down, it really does have a nice hold. It's not as good as my Too Faced one that you know I love, but this one is still very, very nice. It does hold my brows up. It's a little bit less intense and hard feeling than my favorite Too Faced laminating brow wax, but it's really, really good. It's definitely a top five brow gel for me. I also have the new eyeshadow sticks from Fenty. So they launched a lot more colors. These are just the colors that I received. Too matte, too shimmer. I really like the matte. They're very, very easy to use, very easy to blend. They don't crease. Now the new shimmer sticks that they launched, I like a little bit less. I just feel like they give an underwhelming shimmer to the eye where I'm better off just using a powder eyeshadow. They just don't give what they look like they're going to give in the stick form. I'm pretty picky when it comes to shimmer eyeshadow sticks. I've been testing a lot of shimmer eyeshadow sticks recently and these ones, they don't have the power that I want them to have, and I, I'm finding that a common trend amongst a lot of the eyeshadow sticks that I've tested, but the matte ones, really good, really malleable. Not that these ones, the shimmer ones, are hard to use, but they don't give on the eyelid what I need them to give. Okay, and then palettes. Now, it was hard for me to like say, is this a fall launch or is this a holiday launch? But if it's not in this one, it will be in the holiday launch. So we'll start off with the palette that I'm wearing today. I haven't yet talked about it on my channel. We'll talk about the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Defining Neutral Palette. I'm gonna consider this a fall launch and then their new multi grown palette is going to be the holiday launch. But this one is one of the most unique palettes that I've ever used. And because it's more unique, I have to use a little bit more brain power with it, which for me is not as appealing. I want to be completely thoughtless, but there definitely are some pros. So this is unique because these bigger pans are actually more of a pomade formula. I would say they're a hybrid between pomade and powder because they still blend really easily and pick up really easily with a brush, but there definitely is that cream aspect to it. For me and my preferences, the pomade is too big. I would have preferred the powder side to have been a bit bigger. I'm just more comfortable with powders, but this is very unique. You cannot use this on the face, you can use this as lip liner, you can use this as eyeliner for a lot of things. I used the pomade of the Tourmaline right here as my eyeliner. Love using this for eyeliner. So I'm still kind of getting a feel of how I best want to use this for myself, but it is definitely very beginner friendly. In fact, in some ways, it's a little bit too sheer. It takes a little bit too much work to get the shades to build up. But I am liking this, but I'm still learning about it because it is such a unique setup and layout here. But you can do a lot with it. And I've been enjoying like using the pomade here to highlight, using this pomade for eyeliner. You can use it in the brows. You can blend and set with the powder side. So, you know, the colors also aren't exactly very exciting, but they're great for shade work, for dimension, for brightness and highlighting. So it's a very versatile palette. I actually am very much liking it, but with the different kind of setup here and formulas, it is definitely out of 
my norm. It is for everybody, but I definitely see it as more of a pro product. Okay, and then Makeup by Mario also relaunched their holiday palette from last year. So I guess this technically is a holiday launch, but we're gonna count it as a fall launch. So this is the Ethereal Eyes eyeshadow palette. What a beautiful nude palette. I mean, when they came out with this last year, I loved it. It's by far my favorite palette that he's launched. The formula is extremely luxurious. The glimmers here are also a very luxury formula. This palette is made in Italy. No, it's made in the USA. I stand corrected. But anyways, it has almost like an Italian formula. God, that shocked me. But yeah, if you're interested in this and you missed it last year, it is available at Sephora, so I definitely recommend this, especially if you were missing out on it. Next up from ABH, I wanted to count this as a holiday launch, but it's definitely a fall launch considering it is called Fall Romance. And this formula, it's drier than what I'm used to from ABH. I do still think that the performance is there, but when I think of a classic ABH formula, I definitely think of creamy and butteriness, which I don't really get from this palette. And this palette is fine. Like I said, performance is there. If you like deeper, grungy, smoky eye looks, especially if you have a medium or deeper complexion, I think you will like this, especially if the color story speaks to you. It's a great palette for fall. This is actually in my fall curated collection, my fall eyeshadow wardrobe that I made for myself. However, it's not my favorite ABH launch. It's just not my kind of colors that I'm super comfortable reaching for. So it's not necessarily for me. I'm not in love with this particular ABH launch, but it is a fantastic fall launch in that regard. Okay, a Too Faced Maple Syrup Pancakes. I've been waxing poetic about this palette. You know, the quality is not knocking my socks off by any means. It's Too Faced, we know how it is. But the standout here really is the color story. I've been having a lot of fun with this color story, creating a lot of fun looks, but also still have the ability to create really wearable everyday looks. Tons of versatility. The formula, while not amazing, it's it's fine. It gets the job done. The shimmers look pretty on the eyelid. The mattes, they blend very easily. So if you are into this color story, I definitely do recommend it. I don't think the colors have anything to do with pancakes, truly, other than the names here, but I like what they did. Very, very subtle scent of pancakes. I personally would like it to be stronger, but I know those offended by fragrance will appreciate that. So, no, I really like this palette. I know a lot of people who are Too Faced haters will say, you don't need this. I also was once a Too Faced hater. You probably don't need this, but I really like it. I recommend it. But don't go in thinking, you know, you're getting luxury quality because you're not. And then the last palette that I have for fall launches is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 palette. So this one is also very boring, like the Danessa Myricks. You still do have two pomades. This is an extremely luxurious formula as well. Very, very easy to blend. Definitely, if you are missing these colors in your collection, this is worth the investment. However, if you have these colors in your collection, you don't need to invest in this kind of thing. But for what it is, a matte palette with neutral basic shades, he did a great job with it. It's just not something that everybody needs. And if you're asking me Danessa Myricks or Patrick Ta, honestly, I just love powders better. So I'd recommend the Patrick Ta over the Danessa. But again, the Danessa is just so unique, so fun, and the formulas are very, very different. The Patrick Ta, you get a lot of pigment straight out the gate. Danessa Myricks is a more soft, buildable formulation. So that also could depend on your skill level right there. And then I do have two lip products to finish this out. First, we have these new liquid lipsticks from Fenty. I have three of the shades. So these are the Fenty Icon Velvet Lipsticks. Transparently, today's the first day that I pulled these out. The packaging on these, kind of incredible. And they have that velvet kind of finish. You know, it's not super drying, but I've always loved the original Fenty liquid lipstick that is quite drying, but they have the most phenomenal colors. I've always loved that formula, even though it is extremely drying. These ones definitely have a more flexible feel to them on the lips. They are matte. You see, they do kind of go into the fine line of the lips, but you can expect that with any liquid lipstick. It seems to be wearing well. Again, stay tuned for the speed reviews. This kind of formula is not really my jam. I like a glossy lip at the moment, but if you want like a more flexible kind of liquid lipstick, 
this one could be something you would like. A little bit of transfer, nothing crazy. So yeah, I mean, these are solid for what they are. And then lastly, this is a formula I have been loving from Milk Makeup. They have a lot more colors. They launched a whole line of their Odyssey lip oils and they have fun colors. They have very neutral colors. Colors great for every day. This is an extremely comfortable lip oil formulation. It feels very lightweight on the lips, but still adds a lot of hydration. I don't know if you can see, but it kind of just filled in the lines of the lips that the Fenty liquid lipsticks kind of left behind here. Not extremely long wearing, so that's kind of my eh when it comes to this product, but very hydrating. And I've been reaching for these pretty much every day because they are currently in my speed reviews testing kind of drawer, and I've been loving these to finish off the lips. So. These are really, really great. So there we have it, you guys. Those are 20 of the newest products that have launched for the fall from Sephora. Definitely make sure you stay subscribed because I will be pulling out stuff to do a holiday edition very soon. There's a ton of holiday specific launches, a ton of holiday sets that I have to cover for you guys. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.